So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday. In today's DAX Fridays, we're going to do part two of data modeling. Yes. So we're going to talk about the type of models that you normally create in Power BI and which ones are best. We're going to actually talk about three type of, they are called schemas, and it is the um, star, schema, the snowflake schema, and the galaxy. How cool those names are. Anyhow, let's get the video started. Okay, we're going to start with this star schema, the easiest and the ones that you should strive to use as much as possible. We will talk about why. And I'm going to give you at the end an example of how you create a star schema from a snowflake, also called the normalized. Step by step, step by step. Okay, let's begin. Um, first of all, we're going to do a star schema. And the star schema looks, I think it's always easier to show how these things look. If my mouse will come to live, library image. And I'm going to show you the star. This is the North Wind data set that we always use. We're familiar with it, so it's easier to explain things, right? So now, star schema. It is composed, go and check my previous video because I talk about dimensions and fact, but it is composed of a fact table and then dimension tables. In this case, you can actually pause and see if you can find what the dimensions on the fact tables are. Did you do it? Okay, welcome back. So here's the thing, here we have, this is our fact tables. Remember, fact tables have tables that change very, very quickly. So this is an ordered table. If your company is doing good, you will have a lot of orders, so you will get lines there all the time. While the dimension tables are, for example, here the product table, the customer table, and this is the calendar table, the date table, that give you more information about your fact table and do not change very often. You might not get customers very often or you don't develop customers very often. You get one day a day, right? <laughs> <laughs> they change very, very slowly and they give you more information. Here is the thing. This will tell you when the order was placed. This will tell you who places the orders, the customer, and this will tell you what they place. So they are adding more information to the orders table. That's how you know what is a fact and what is a dimension table. Okay? So they call it a star because it looks like a star, kind of. So I actually have a picture. It doesn't, this particularly doesn't look so much like a star, but I have here an example that I stole from Microsoft documentation. And you can see there, this is you have your fact and then you have your um, dimensions around, and that looks more like a star, right? So they have, they look like these. Right? And then you have the fact in the middle, and then you have all the dimensions around it. And you are just one table away from the fact. Okay? So you follow the relation once, and then you get to the dimension table. Good. Next up, we're going to talk about the snowflake. And this is something that you're probably are importing if you're importing from data warehouses, for example. Let me show you. It has a very characteristic look. Um, we're going to put a, a snowflake. There we have it. So, again, this is the Northwind data set that I actually denormalized the fact table. We will talk about that in a second. Now, again, pause the video and see if you can find which one is the dimension table and which one is the fact table, okay? Or, or. Done it? Welcome back. Okay, so here's the thing. Here we have our orders table. I was meant to have the green one. Here's our orders table, which is our fact table. And then we have here the who bought something. We have here the when something was bought, and then we have here the what. So, so far, so good. This is a star, but you can see that there are two what. 
here you have uh, the product table that has been split. They took out the categories. So you can have, for example, the Northwind data set has food and you have a category dairy product. And then you have all the cheeses here, for example. Right. So because these categories repeating all the time, what they did, they, they take it out and they put it in another table. And you might wonder, okay, why did they do that? Well, this is one of the advantages of the snowflake um, schemas. And it is that if you do it like that, the compression will actually be much, much better. Okay. The bad thing, or the plus thing is that, you know, the compression will be better and it will be faster write. So you can write into this table faster than if you have like a humongous table, right? Where you have to write everything and repeat everything a thousand times. In here, you will write that you add a new product and then you're in category two. While in here, you will have to add the category name and the category. It will take longer to write. The negative part of this one is that, which is actually the positive of the star, is that the queries are very complex. Why they are complex? Well, because to be able to access the categories, you have to join these two tables while in here they are already joined. And you might say, hey, I am using the Northwind data set and I'm not doing any joins. You're not, but the joins are getting done in the background. So if you go to perform an analyzer and you look at the queries that get written in the background and are sent to the database, you'll see that there is a join performed in here, even if you don't see it. Here it is already joined. So the queries are actually easier, even if you are not writing them. And they are faster because they only need to get one table and look up that. And because the compression of, in this case, already pack is very, very good, it will be able to access the information very, very quickly. And this is why star schemas are the preferred one at the stars of the modeling in BI, right? Because you get faster and easier queries. If you are doing something for cell service, so your business users would use it, you have to, you have to do a star. These snowflakes are super complicated and the users won't be able to find or query anything themselves. So it gets a lot, a lot harder. Now, there is a third one. We said it in the beginning. Let me show you what that is. That is quite cool. It's called the galaxy. And this is actually a very common one. I didn't know it was called a galaxy. Uh, so let me show you. Always easier to explain. So here we have. Now, so again, pause the video and try to find what is the fact and what is the dimension and come back. You back? Let's, let's do it. Okay, so here we have a fact table and look at here. We have another fact table and this is actually very common. You'll see that in a lot of Power BI models and that's where you actually start getting like true insights when you're combining facts from different types of business like marketing and the product and you know, you know this, I don't need to explain it. And then here we have the what and here we have the when, and here we have the who, right? Our dimensions, this is a what. So the galaxy is like half star thing. So you have, if you look at it, this is, you have like that, and then this one you have like that. Because your dimensions are not split, you're still one table away from your dimension table. So you're still good to go. This is your fact table, this is your fact table, and then you have your dimensions around. You're just one fact away from what you need. Okay? Now, there is one more I want to show you, which is how the Northwind dataset actually looks like when you import it. And I remember when I started working with that, it confused me a lot. <laughs> Why have they done it like that? There are actually reasons to the madness. Again, pause the video and try to identify where are the facts, tables, and where are the dimensions. 
You're back? Okay, good. Let's do it. So here we have the fact. And check this out. This is another fact. So they have normalized the fact table. And then we have here the who, the when, and the what. So these two have been normalized and these two have been normalized. Now, why would you separate the fact table into two tables? If you look at how the, the, the model looks like, you'll see that they have orders and then they have order details. And imagine now that you are managing Amazon's product database. They have like trillions of orders per day. These tables will get humongous. Right. If you put these two tables together in one, you'll see you see the number of columns that it has. It's going to be like really wide, really long, and it's going to be very very hard to query. So what they've done, they just split it. And they have here like high level orders, and here they have the order details, like which order numbers they have. So for example, one order can have like three products, and they split the products in there. Why would they do that? Again, do you remember the benefits of the snowflake, the compression and the faster, right? So that is the reason why you would have it like this. Now, when you're doing Power BI models, you have to think about, okay, who am I doing this for? How much data do I have? And who is it going to be using the model? If you have business users that are using the model, you don't have a lot of data then you can actually denormalize this data set and get it to look like that. This is the Northwind data set denormalized. It's exactly the same one. I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Now, if you have a lot of data, then you can start thinking like, mm, okay, so do I need all Amazon orders from 1989? For who? Who wants to see the data? What data do they want to see? What questions do they want to get asked? And is there a possibility to make these data set smaller that it would still answer the questions that they need? Can I have an aggregate table that I don't need to have all the order details? Maybe the order details is not necessary for them. They just need order, so you can just keep it all together. So before we go to the example, I want to talk about this. I've seen these more times than I wish to remember, to be honest. So here we have an example of a data model. And when I see these, and normally they come and say, like, oh, I have problems with either performance or the results are not as they think that they should be. There are like many too many relationships everywhere and they're like, you know, the, the model is just, let's put everything in there and hopefully it will work. When I see this, it basically means that somebody hasn't done the requirements yet you need to go back to the business and understand who is going to use the model, what are they going to use it for, and then try to get as close as you can to these, to the star, or at least the galaxy version, okay? This is just going to be a nightmare for you, for your users, and for the database, okay? So try to stay away. Doing Proper modeling will save you thousands of hours, not only in troubleshooting, but also for, you know, answering questions. With that said, what we're going to do now, I'm going to go to the Northwind. We're going to get, you know, the data set that we always work with is actually this one. It's the Galaxy Star. And as you can see, there is no problem to work with that. There's no problem for us because we know, but if you're going to deliver, if I was going to deliver this to the business, I would for sure, if possible, normal, denormalize it like this. Okay. So let's get our hands dirty, shall we? Okay, this is again the Northwind data set that we always use. It looks like that. I haven't denormalized the data set at all. When I use it, I use it like this. So if we go here to transform data, what we're going to do is denormalize the fact table and then normalize the, uh, let me show you. We're going to denormalize the fact table and then we're going to denormalize the product table, right? So we actually can get to the star scheme. So here we have the orders table. And when it loads, you're going to see that because it comes from a, a 
already data model in the background. So I will have the columns. Now I have to go up one. Let me remove that one and that one. You're going to see that the other tables are actually going to show in here, which is quite nice. If they don't show up, you can just do a merge. That works too. So we are going to get it there and then you can see the order details. What I'm going to do is expand and just grab the information I want. And that's all. So we're merging the two tables together. Now you want to do these on the source. As, as much as possible. Obviously, if you don't own the source and you have no way to transfer it to a place that you own it, you'll have to do it in Power Query. Or you can do it in DAX if it gets too slow in Power Query. But um, obviously, it's actually better to do it in the source. The joining in Power Query can get very, very slow. So now that we've joined these two together, I can actually get rid of the order details. We don't need that anymore. And then we're going to do the same with products. I'm going to remove that and products again, because we are importing these from a model, a data model, the table will come here. It gives you a possibility to join the tables when you import them. Uh, I have the category here. I don't want category D. I don't want products. I just want that one. And then we will get it together and we did this with the covid data set so go and check it out that actually denormalize the fact table and create a star scheme Re remove the columns and then we don't need the categories anymore and you can actually do that with a Northwind data set. There's just too few rows for it to be a problem, either of being too wide or being too tall. It's like, it's going to work like that. And it is going to be so much easier to write queries doing that. And faster queries, by the way. So let it load. Come on, baby. Modeling is actually a lot of fun. I recommend you to try it as much as you can. Just grab data sets from Kaggle or anywhere and just have fun with it. And there we have our star model. Look at that. So here we have, try to find where the fact and dimensions tables are, but here we have our fact table. And here we have our what, our who, and our when. Cool, right? 